This video is being made with love for my friend Tiffany. So happy to be able to do this with you, my friend. I'm going to start with what I call my sunrise bed yoga series that I do every morning because I know both of us have some challenges with our back. Um, so I do these movements in bed, but you can absolutely do them, you know, on your yoga mat or in your bed um, once you get up or before you get up. So I'd like to start with that and then we're going to move into the practice, okay? So from your bed or from your mat, Tiff, we're going to lie down and again, slowly, carefully, right, coming down. Making sure you're supported. The knees are going to be bent and the low back connected to the mat. Now that's going to be important. We don't want a lot of arching going on here. So you're going to gently, before we start moving, take a few moments to settle. We're going to do this again and connect to the breath once we sit up. But for now, lying on the bed or lying on the mat, back of the head connected, shoulders draw down away from the ears, arms can be relaxed, palms up or down, whatever feels best to you. Every time you exhale, Think of drawing gently the belly button to the spine and pressing, again, very gently that low back into the mat. These are not hardcore power movements, right? We're just going to see how the back feels. Checking in, noticing what is present today. And it's going to be different every time, right? We know that. So in the beginning of the practice, it's really important to take this time to arrive, to settle in, to notice how you feel before you start introducing some movements. So I'm going to start with some gentle pelvic rocking here. So on the inhale, Think of making a little space, and again, this is very small movements, a little space between your low back and the mat. So what I'm doing here is just arching my back off the mat just a tiny bit, and then on the exhale, draw the belly button to the spine and press that low back back down into the mat. I'm going to move my arms so you can able to see me better here. So on the inhale, a gentle space like you're lifting your hips up a bit. And then on the exhale, drawing the belly button to the spine and pressing lightly the back into the mat. Now your breath can be, you're gonna do this a few more times at your own pace. Your breath can be through the nose or through the mouth. The breath through the nose warms up the body internally. The breath through the mouth cools the body. And we'll talk about the breath again, or more I should say, when we come to seated momentarily. But for now I want to start with my Sunrise Bed Yoga series that I do every morning. They really, this really helps me to feel better I have, have chronic pain like you do, and this makes a big difference in my ability to move in the morning. So we're gonna do a few of those, maybe six to eight, depending on how you feel. And then we're gonna do some gentle knee rocks. Now, you can have your feet wide if you feel more comfortable, or you can have the knees more together. Your arms are gonna be anchored to the side of the bed or the mat. The feet are going to stay planted on the mat here. Your body, your back, think of your shoulder blades and your hips are going to stay connected. Your hips might rock off a tiny bit. You just don't want a huge rock, particularly to start, okay? So when you're ready, 
you're going to just drop your knees to one side. You'll feel a stretch on the opposite side. Come back up to center at your own pace. And then slowly the other way. Now you may be moving a lot bigger range of motion than I am or smaller. It's all about how you feel, Tiff. This is your practice, your time for self-care. So you're going to make those choices, right, that are best for you. Now your head can be looking straight ahead. I'm turning a lot because I want to be talking to you through the camera. But you can keep your head neutral, meaning looking straight up. Or you can turn your head the opposite way of your knees if you'd like. Okay? So thinking of the breathing, and again, I'm going to offer you a structured breath. If this doesn't work for you, you're going to breathe any way that feels good. So on the inhale would be where the knees would drop away from the midline. And then on the exhale, bring the knees back up. On the inhale, they drop again the other way. And again, coming back up. So, again, the, um, the amount of movement, how it feels to you. There are some days when I do this that I move a tiny bit because my back is really, really painful. So it's all about you and your experience each time you practice this. So now the next movement here, so those were knee drops or knee rocks side to side. Now this next movement is called Apanasana. So you're going to take your left leg and straighten it out onto the bed or to the mat. Gently bring your right leg in. Now, you can bring your leg in a little, you can bring it in more. It's going to all depend again on how close you want to bring this knee in towards your torso. It's all going to depend on how your back feels, okay? Now, your hands can be underneath the knee or below the knee. You just don't want to be directly on the joint, right? It's safer not to be directly on the joint. So hands, again, can be below the knee or underneath. This is a cross-body stretch right across the back. It's really good for SI joint, IT band. So we're going to take a breath in. And on the exhale, you're going to bend your elbows, draw this right knee in as much or as little as you would like. And as you do that, the left leg is pressing away. So it's, a, again, a pull-push, basically. And then you're going to release that. Take a breath in again at your own perfect pace. Exhale. Draw that knee in as you actively press that left leg away. Nice. And then you release it. And I typically do, I would recommend about six repetitions. I may, may not be doing all of that today with you um, because I have a lot of things I want to cover within the time that I'm trying to get this video in 30 to 45 minutes for you. So after you get about six repetitions on one side, you're going to place your right foot down, your left foot to meet it. Take a moment to pause. Maybe notice how the right side feels compared to the left. Stay present in your practice, present in, your, in the moment as much as you can. Stay connected to your breath. And now we're going to come to second side. So the left knee is going to come up. The right leg is going to extend. You can pull your toes towards your shins or relax them. I prefer pulling it in. It just stabilizes my knee a bit more. So again, decide where you want the hands to be. Take a breath in. And then when you're ready on the exhale, bend the elbows. Draw that left knee in as you actively press the right leg away. Exhale here as much as you can. And then release. Inhale again when you're ready to prepare. And then exhale, drawing in the knee as you press the right leg away. And you're going to repeat this a few more times. Now, one thing that's really good to know is that a longer exhale, if you can do the longer exhale, think of your inhale, let's try it here, inhaling, and then on the exhale, see if you can make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. 
through your nose, through your mouth. And what that does, that longer exhale, it taps into the relaxation response in the body. So it, it taps into the, the rest and digest part of our nervous system, right? And that can be really, really helpful for chronic pain management. So again, doing about six to eight on this side, how many of that you'd like, right? And then you're gonna place the left foot down, the right foot to meet it. Pause here for a moment. Again, the pause is as important as the pose or the movement because the pause is where we absorb the benefits of what we just did. So this is a subtle practice, meaning that it's slow, it's introspective, we're focused on how we feel throughout the practice. This is not power yoga by any means. You and I don't need power yoga, all right? We need to be able to, to move and be functional and help with our pain management. Now, the next one is a really big um, forward bend from a supine position. This is our supine on our back. So it's called figure four. You might have done it before. The way I like to teach it is take the right heel to the top of the left ankle and then notice how it feels when you gently bring this heel up closer to the knee or maybe above and hook it right above that left knee. I like people to start low and then gently come up and notice where they can be without pain, right? This particular movement where that heel may be above that left knee, that's a very big hip opener here, okay? So it might feel better for you to have the heel below the knee or at the ankle. The whole shape is the same, right? We're just trying to bring this right knee out to the side. Pause here. Now your left foot can stay on the bed or on the mat, and this is a perfect stretch here. This is again called supine pigeon or figure four. Now, if you'd like more intensity, wherever that heel is, more intensity would be to lift the left foot off the mat. And this may be a lot. This may be a lot. So again, always move mindfully, right? Easily. See how this feels. This might be too much. You might prefer to keep that foot down, okay? So again, whatever you do is perfect. Remember, this is your body, your practice. And again, staying with your breath, releasing that when you're ready. Maybe rock a bit side to side with those knees like we did in the beginning. Release that. That's one of my favorite ones. Most of my uh, pain for my arthritis is in my right side. So what I do is I start on the right side, I go to the left side, and then I go back to the right side again to kind of give it a little extra love. You know, you can certainly do that um, or not. It's up to you. So let's go to second side now. Again, easing in, taking that heel of the left foot on top of that right he um, ankle, excuse me, and then play with it a bit. See how this side feels. Maybe it will come up closer to the knee or maybe above the knee. Wherever you can be is perfect. Another great way to do this is with a strap or a belt, you know, taking that leg and then gently easing it up. And again, if you don't have a strap or you have any questions, I can absolutely tell you where to get one. So from here, again, you're going to, pause and decide if this is enough intensity wherever you are or do you want to lift that foot off and breathe nice and then release down again do as many of these as you would like and the last part of the sunrise bed yoga series there are two choices it's going to be child pose or knees into chest. So now you have both knees up into the chest. I'm going to offer a child pose in a moment, but this is a perfect option, is if you don't want to kneel and you like staying on your back, you can draw both knees into the chest here. 
Thinking of on the exhale, maybe pulling in a little bit more intensity. This is a big stretch for that low back and the hips. Now, the way that I would recommend moving into child pose, if you would like child, is to roll to one side carefully. Take a moment here. Again, we don't want to be moving fast. We want to be mindful. Notice how everything is feeling. And then slowly begin to bring yourself up. And take a moment here, because when you've been down for a while and you lift up, it takes a minute sometimes for the blood pressure to regulate, right? And then I'm gonna offer you child pose or puppy now, but you can also always stay on your back. Now, personally, I love my kneeling pad. It's 20 years old, I've duct taped it. <laughs> but I love this thing because it really allows me to kneel pain free, okay? If you don't have a kneeling pad, you can have a, your mat rolled up a little bit more if that feels good. So for child pose or puppy, let's go over the differences. In puppy, the hands are gonna walk forward onto the mat and you're gonna sink your hips back, but they're gonna stay up in the air more. Now, you can have your forehead, you can place your hands uh, below your forehead and place your forehead on top of it. If you have a block, you could put your forehead on a block. Your arms could be any way you'd like. So in puppy, the hips are up in the air. That is less weight bearing on the knees. In child, the more you sink back the hips over the heels, the more intensity, the more bend and weight bearing you have in the knees, right? So we have to see how, how is this feeling today? Where do I want to be in child or puppy? Pausing here, connecting to your third eye, connecting to your wisdom. Maybe again, practicing, you'd stay a few more breaths there. Maybe again, practicing those longer exhales if that works for you, if that serves you. Some people, a structured breath makes them feel stressed. And if that's you, that's nothing wrong with that. I just want you to decide, right, how this is feeling to you. So now, after the Sunrise Bed Yoga series, we're going to now come to seated. So when you're sitting on your mat or in your chair, again, you can always do these in the chair as well, I like to sit on something like a cushion, a pillow or my little kneeling pad here. We're gonna do a few seated movements before we come into some little more kneeling and then some sun sanitation options with the chair. So from a seated position, if you are up on something, it's going to relax through the back more. It's going to invite the hips to relax more. So the lifted lifting of the hips from sitting on a cushion might feel better to you. Now your legs can be in any position that you'd like. This is called easy pose. And for a lot of us, this is not easy. <laughs> it's really not. And so if your legs feel better straight or you're in the chair, that's perfect. Whatever is best. Remember, that's the most important thing about your practice is your decisions as to how you feel today and giving yourself what you need. So. This is the beginning part of settling and centering and arriving. So I'm going to be doing a little bit more spinal movement here. You can start with this if you prefer. The first 15 minutes or so of the video that, I, that we just did is the Sunrise Bed Yoga series. You could change this up. You could start here seated and do these first and then go to the sunrise bed yoga. I'm trying to compartmentalize the video so you can decide what parts of it you might like um, as you're practicing each time. Okay, so sitting and settling and centering. We did some of this when we were lying on our back. Maybe the eyes close or you take a soft gaze to the earth. Feel the connection to the earth beneath you, grounding, that beautiful support of grounded energy. 
and then lengthen through the crown. Again, you might be sitting on a cushion as we talked about. Now think of your alignment. One thing that I've been working on because I've been practicing trying to avoid forward, forward head is this is something right out of the arthritis uh, training is I take a, my index finger to my chin and my thumb to my sternum or my chest, sitting up tall, drawing the chin back away from the finger and then bringing it back. Take a breath in on the exhale, drawing the chin back. And what that's doing is stretching through the front part of these neck muscles that can be very tight and that can cause the head to come forward. And if the head, the, the more, and every inch the head comes forward, it adds five more pounds of pressure onto the neck and onto the head. So we really want to be mindful of our posture, right? Particularly as we get older and also with our back challenges, all right? So think about ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Again, connecting to the breath here. So now I'm going to invite you into some spinal stirs. I really like these to warm up the muscles around the spine. Um, again, your choice as to how big of circles you want, what direction you want to start in, all of that. Okay, and I'm going to invite you into this with a breath pattern that you may or may not want to practice, okay? So starting on the inhale, as we begin to come forward, we're going to exhale, and then we're going to move to one side, to the back up straight. So this would be our inhale lengthen, right? And then the exhale as we come forward. Inhale and lengthen, exhale. So in spinal stirs, your back is staying nice and straight here. Sometimes the more you do something or repetition in yoga, your back might be starting to loosen up a bit. You may get more range of motion. Again, that's all up to you, right? Again, staying with the breath. And then when you feel complete in one direction, find that length again in spine. That is critical, so important. Length in spine so the energy can move. And also we're staying as functional as we can be. We're in our perfect anatomical position. We're going to lengthen again, take a breath in, and then we're going to stir around the spine the other direction. So we want to be moving what we call equal energy in yoga. So we want to be moving as much as we can in the same one way and then the other so that we're letting the energy move from the base of the spine up to the crown of the head and then back down. Good. And then coming upright, reset here. Invite your shoulders now to move up and back and around. Now, as you're moving, you might notice snap, crackle, pop, <laughs> groan, creak, right? All of that. Um, whatever you're feeling, as long as there's no pain, that, it, that is very normal um, movement and sounds that the body makes. Now we're going to circle the shoulders a different way. Only a few forward though. We don't want to encourage this posture, but we do want the shoulders to be getting the range of motion that, it can, that they can do. And then pause. So again, cracking, popping, very normal as long as there's no pain. Pain is always to be avoided. It's always the red flag, right? So now from here, I'm gonna work a little bit with the neck. So we're going to tilt the right ear toward the right shoulder. Good. Let your left shoulder relax. Release that arm to the mat. Or you might want it in space. And then gently you can take that hand and bring it to the side of your neck in stillness or with some gentle massage here. Move the head and neck around maybe. There's a lot of tension and pressure sometimes in these muscles. And the heart and the hand is connected directly to the, excuse me, the hand is correct, 
connected directly to the heart in yoga. So there's healing energy here, right? And so we can help to heal ourselves. And then relax that side, reset, and notice the difference. You might notice the difference between one side and the other. Keeping that beautiful length in the breath. Now we're gonna tilt the head the other way, dropping the shoulder down, maybe extending that arm. inviting the stretch, and then igniting the healing energy in the hands, coming to the neck, maybe in stillness, or maybe some gentle massage here. Remember, this practice is for you to practice self-care. You do so much for everybody else. This is your time. This is for you. And you deserve it, girl. Good. And then let that go, relax, release. And now before we transition to kneeling, I'm going to invite you into a lateral bend here. <clears throat> so you're going to take one arm to the mat, doesn't matter which way, and we're going to extend the, the arm up, the other one. Now, if your shoulder's cranky and the arm doesn't want to go all the way up, you can be in cactus here, or you could drop the elbow lower. So we're going to lengthen wherever we can, and we're gonna lean over toward this connected hand, up and over. Now, your gaze can be up to the top hand, straight ahead, or down to the hand that's connected to the mat. That has a lot to do with how your neck feels, right? So see how your neck feels today. And then, I know hands and wrists, movement gently here. Circling, open and closing any direction you want, and then a different way. So again, some wonderful gentle movement in the wrists and hands as best you can. And then pause and hold, come into stationary, maybe spin the palm down toward the earth if you can, find your gaze, again, where you wanna be. And then we're gonna slowly transition, coming up again, pause, Pause is so important. <sighs> Absorb the benefits of what you're doing. Stay present with your breath. And then other hand connects. Lengthen up that arm any way it can go. Up and over here. Find your gaze on this side. Find how your neck feels in this direction, right? And then movement. Wrists and hands. I call this the yoga wave, <laughs> and then a different way. Good. And then pause here. And again, maybe the palm spin, spins down toward the earth. It's a grounding, groundedness. And then release that. Nice. Keep checking in. Notice how you feel. And now we're going to come into a little bit of kneeling, a little bit of cat-cow, a little bit of sunbird, and then we're going to come into the sun sanitations with the use of the chair or the wall. Okay, so moving to kneeling. Again, maybe taking padding under the knees if that feels good to you. So find where you are. Now, the other thing I want to talk about here is wrists, wrists and hands. I know weight bearing can be a challenge, right? I, I get that. So, options. You can always go to forearms. You can always use a wrist wedge. This is a wedge. It's thicker on one side and thinner here. If you have any interest in learning about where to get this stuff, give me an email or text. Let me know. What I do, the, the, the taller or the fatter side, I put it underneath the mat. So when I'm working with my wrist, it distributes the weight differently, okay? I put it under the mat so it doesn't slip. And another nice thing is soft blocks, not the hard ones, but the soft ones, can be really nice for weight bearing as well. It just distributes the weight differently in the hands and the wrist, because I have some similar challenges as you do, and I find the weight bearing sometimes really can be too, uh, too painful, 
okay? So from this table position, whatever you want the wrists to be, again, stabilizing your core, belly button drawing into spine. We're gonna move through some gentle cat cows now. So this is directly connected to the spine. So from this table start position, on the inhale, lift the tailbone and look forward. And then on the exhale, tuck the tailbone, arch the back, press the floor away, tuck the chin in toward the heart. And move back and forth here. Lifting, I'm gonna add the ankle movement in a moment if, if you'd like to add that. But for now, starting with the spine and as you move through your cat cow, it always starts at the tailbone. Be very mindful as to how this is feeling to you. And again, you can do as many as you like. I'm, I'm kind of going through a few of th these things so that you can decide. You can always stop the video, do more if you would like to do more. Now, I'd like to add a little bit of ankle movement here because I know ankles are a challenge as well. So this could be done either with the cat or the cow. So you can have your feet flat or you can tuck your toes under. So I usually like to take a breath in on the exhale. As I'm beginning to look forward, I keep my toes and the tops of the feet on the mat. As I go into angry cat, Tucking the tailbone, this is where I tuck the toes under. Arch the back, press the floor away. Exhale, exhale here. And then once I come back to table and then to the cow variation as I look forward, I flatten the tops of the feet on the mat again. So this might work for you, it might not. Really depending on, again, your decisions as to what is best. You can absolutely stay with the tops of the feet um, planted on the mat and not move at all, or you could stay with the toes tucked under. Whatever is best for you, okay? So now from here, we're gonna move into sunbird, one side and the other. I really like this one, Tiff, because it helps to stabilize the spine because with back challenges, we want to be able to strengthen the back muscles as well. And this is one way to do it, okay? So from the table position, we're gonna take your <clears throat> right leg back, lift it up, hip height, bend the right knee, lift it up a little bit more maybe, and then straighten the leg. See how this feels? Now this is a balance challenge, so you always want to be careful. If it's better for you, if you're having a real cranky back day and it's better for you to keep the foot down on the mat, please do. Now, the left hand, we're going to lift it off the mat and notice what that does to the balance. You may be able to lift it higher or even straightening that left arm perhaps with the thumb up. Your gaze is going to be to the top of the mat, breathe here. And then relax that side, let it go. We'll come to second side in a moment. And again, I would recommend a couple different repetitions here if you can. But remember, anywhere along the way with these postures, you can stop or change it up. This is your choices, right? So again, from table, again, engage in the core here. Left leg back, lifting it up hip height, maybe bending the knee, lifting up a little bit more, and then straightening it. Okay, now see how the side feels. Right hand might come off the mat. See how your stability is. It might be very different from one side to the other. Maybe that right arm straightens. If the right arm is straight, the thumb can be up to open up the shoulder, or the palm can be down. Make sure you're breathing, breathing. Don't hold the breath, please. Breathe, breathe. And then release and relax everything down. One nice way to do that is to come to forearms with your hips up in the air and maybe rock a bit side to side. So from those, the kneeling sunbird, you're in table and then you went opposite arm, opposite leg. I would recommend maybe two or three per side 
of those and notice as you do it some days you might be rocking a little bit more than others but the more you practice that the better off it's going to be you're going to become stronger and more stable because every time we walk the spine rotates a bit right this is working with that stability that rotary stability of the spine okay so that's why i put it in the practice for for us Okay, so now we're gonna come into the sun salutation portion of this video, okay? Um, so we're gonna be coming to standing. Now, I really invite you to come up any way that feels best to you. Take your time, and another really important thing is not to hang unsupported. This is really important to, for back safety. You wanna make sure when you're hanging over and this, by the way, is Uttanasana. This is a great, it's very recommended for back pain. So you bend your knees a lot and kind of drape, but you'd like your hands connected to something. The mat, your lower legs. You don't want to hang unsupported. Now, we're going to take a breath in, slowly begin a half lift. So we're going to look forward. The hands might rise up the legs a little bit below the knees. And then from here, we're going to slowly come up, take our time transitioning up. Again, as we said before, when we came from the mat to seated, it's the same thing from down to standing. We don't want to come up too quickly because then we can get lightheaded. Okay? So we're going to be moving through a half a sun salutation A and then sun salutation A with the use of the chair or a wall. Okay, so again, this is the sun salutation part of the video. And you can use, so think about your wrists, your hands, your back, right? On days that, that you may be having a lot of discomfort or pain in the body, the more, the higher up you are on the wall or the chair, it's going to be less weight bearing, right? So here I am with the use of the wall with my wrist. There's a lot less weight than if I'm here or especially here, right? So just again, be aware of that, that you can absolutely use a wall, use a chair. The sun sanitation is going to be the same benefit as if you're on the mat weight bearing. So just remember, less intensity, the closer you get to the ground, the more intensity in the wrists, the hands, the back. But we're gonna start with sun salutation A. I'm gonna to turn toward the chair, toward the wall. And sun salutations are great because it's a greeting of the new day, gratitude, right? For this new day, gratitude for all that we can do. So palms together at heart, or I sometimes find this challenging for my wrists, so I might take one hand on top of the other. So on the inhale, we're gonna rise up in a sun breath, gaze up. Maybe the fingertips touch, maybe they don't. Now, as we exhale and float the arms down, start with the bent elbows like this, okay? This is really an important point too, Tiff. We're gonna bow forward with a flat back, flat back. We don't wanna round the spine. Take the hands to the chair or to your legs and now we're going to fold. So we can fold now safely because we have our hands connected to something. Inhale, half lift. Look forward, tailbone lifts. Exhale, fold. Press through the feet. Rise up through the crown of the head. Arms going to come around the body again. Sun breath. Look up, maybe. See how your neck feels. And then bring the hands home to heart, pause here. There are many variations of a sun salutation. So I'm gonna show you the one that I like, that I use, but I like to start with half sun. And sometimes if I'm really not feeling well in my back or wrist, I'll stay with a few half suns and not even go to full sun salutation. Okay, so again, I'm trying to give lots of choices here. So, Full Sun Salutation A, one round here. Starting again in Tadasana Mountain, hands home to heart. Inhale, big breath up. 
rise up, stretch. Exhale, swan dive, that's where the elbows are bent. You can also straighten the arms, that's gonna be more intense on your back. Flat back, flat back, core engaged here. Take the hands to the chair or to your legs and fold. Bending the knees a little or a lot, you don't wanna lock the joints out. Inhale, half lift, look forward, lift the tailbone. Exhale, fold. Now, we're going to be moving into the plank version of Sun Citation A. We're going to look forward and place your hands on the chair or your wall. You can hold on to the chair or you can place your hands on top, whatever feels best to your wrists. Step back to plank. Now, if this is too much, you can stay here. You can absolutely stay closer to the chair with the legs. Stabilize your shoulders, engage your core. High plank here. We're gonna move, bend the elbows a tiny bit for a low plank. Then now again, be mindful of your back. Press your hips forward very mindfully. Maybe begin to look up. This is up dog. Maybe the hips come even further even more. Your decision, right? How's your back feeling? Stay present. And then float back to downward facing dog. Bring those hips back. Maybe walk out the dog here. Breathe, breathe, breathe. So sun sanitation is a lot of work on the core. This is really good to practice. But again, it's all about how you feel each time, right? Now, pause. Drop the heels toward the earth and they don't have to connect. Look forward and we're gonna walk those feet and hands closer together again and fold. Inhale, half lift, tailbone lifts, gaze, just like we did in cat cow there earlier. Exhale, fold. Now, press through the feet, rise up through a sun breath, now here I'm going to offer you a back bend. I would recommend either hands behind the head or into the low back for support. Thinking in a back bend, you don't have to bend back at all. You're going to be thinking about lengthening through the spine, pressing the hips and the heart forward. You might begin to look up a bit or you might not. There's some days your back's not going to want to do that, right? So you can stay right here, finding the length. Or you might press the hips and heart forward and gently arch back. For me, I like to support my head because of my arthritis and my neck. So lots of options. And then straightening up and bring the hands back to heart space. Pause here. <sighs> nice. And then relax and release, shake it out. So back bends are again, important because we wanna strengthen the back. And the next video we will make, we'll talk more about and add more uh, back uh, strengthening. But that's a great way to do it with a back bend. Back bends can also be done from a chair, right? Anything, most anything that we do on, any, on a yoga mat can be done from a chair as well. Okay, so lots of different ways. So we have about five minutes left in this 45 minute uh, video. Um, so I am going to move back down to the mat now. The only thing I didn't get in this video, which I can show you really quickly is, actually I think I'm gonna do it anyway, it's a standing tree pose. Um, because balance is really important. So the video may be a little longer than 45 minutes. So sorry about that. <laughs> so much I want to share. So tree pose is a great standing balance. You can use your wall. You could use a chair. You could sit in the chair. There's multiple ways. But balance is critical, especially with arthritis, because the sensors in the joints that keep us upright are affected by arthritis. So we're not as balanced as we were if we don't have arthritis, right? So this is really important to do. So the first thing is we're gonna kind of rock side to side, sway, and the sensors in the feet. Now, you might have your socks off, you might have 
grippy socks on your feet, you might have your shoes on. However you want to do this is perfect again. Remember, it's your practice. Okay, so now, I'm not going to mirror you this time. I'm going to just cue right, left. So we're going to start with the right foot anchoring. Left heel is going to come up and the toe down. And then we're going to take this left leg and rotate it out. Now, you can have it further away, bigger base, better balance in terms of the width of the legs. This is easier to balance this way. Or if you're having a good balance day, you could be closer to that leg. You could actually connect the heel to that right leg, or you could lift that foot off. And again, find your supports, right? Find your wall. You might be against a wall. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then we're going to find the branches, right? The tree branches here. When you're balancing, a couple things are important. And again, practice this. Uh, a couple things are important. Not to lock out that standing leg. Continuing to breathe, right? And also your gaze. If you can look at something that's not moving, that will help you to balance. And then relax that side, let it go. And remember, if you come in and out or have to step out and come back in, it's, it's okay. It's perfect. So now we're going to come to second side, okay? So let's try rooting into the <clears throat> left leg now. Right heel up. Again, turning that leg out. How far away or close do you want to be? How's the balance on this side? Right? Standing leg slightly bent in that knee. And then find where you want to be. This is my challenge side. <laughs> find where you want to be. And then find your branches. And breathe. Breathe and breathe and breathe. <sighs> Perfect. The Tiffany tree. Woo! <laughs> Let it go, girl. Relax it. Shake it out. Maybe rock side to side. Maybe hula hoopy sway. Whatever's good. Okay. Now, excellent. We're going to be moving down to the mat now for the next, the last five minutes of this video. So. The way we want to do that, you always, again, want to move mindfully, right? So you want to take your time and come back down to the mat on your back um, in whatever way is best for you, okay? So take your time, transition. And once you get down here, Tiff, take a moment to, again, feel the groundedness, the earth beneath you. And I'm going to invite you to move intuitively here. So you might want to rock a bit. You might want to stay still. You might want to circle the knees around. You know, whatever you need right now. So at the end of this practice, this is the end part now. And again, you can certainly do this longer. Um, we're going to be coming into a tense and release and then a relaxation, and then a one minute seated meditation. So again, all these sections could be longer as much as you would, you would like. So bringing for the, for the tense and release. Now the importance of this, and this is right out of my yoga for arthritis training. The importance of this is that we have residual energy and tension in the body. So this is one way to kind of release it. Now, we also have to be mindful. I mean, we don't want to tense up and hurt ourselves, obviously. So if you have to decide, again, the layers and levels of how intense you want this to be, you can have your uh, knees bent or your legs straight. And I'm just going to demonstrate or offer you one way, but you're going to decide how much intensity you want to put into this. Okay, so we're going to come into a full body stretch, take a breath in, and on the exhale, we're going to tense up the hands, maybe lift the arms off the mat, maybe lift the head up off the mat, tight, tight, tight as much as you can, and then let it go, 
let it go. If you want to, on the second one, add one leg and then the other leg. I wouldn't bring both legs up at the same time. That's not safe. Or you can leave the legs on the mat. I find, personally, I leave my legs on the mat when I do this. And again, be mindful of the tension in the hands and the wrists with all of it, right? So we'll do it again two more times. Take a breath in. On the exhale, tense, 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 tighten, tighten. Maybe lift the head off. Maybe lift the arms off. Maybe one leg comes off. T tense, tense, and then let it go. <sighs> And if this is at all painful, omit or only tense what you can. And then one last time. Inhale. Take a breath in. Tension in the body. Tight, tight, tight as much as you can. Maybe lift the head off. Maybe the other leg comes up. Ah, make sure you're still breathing. Keep it up a little bit more if you can. And then let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <sighs> Now moving into one minute of Shavasana. Now, Shavasana can be as long as you have, as long as you would like, but I would like to keep this video to 50 minutes for you. So in Shavasana, this is our relaxation, you can be in any position that's best. Some people prefer to lie on their side. Some people prefer to be on their back. Others like to sit up, perhaps, in a chair or on a cushion. And the purpose of Shavasana is to find relaxation, let everything go, and absorb the benefits of your practice. So you'll hear my voice in about another minute to close out the practice. Now, any time you can stay in Shavasana longer, please feel free. You can pause this video at any point. But for now, we're going to start to come out of our Shavasana by gently opening the eyes, looking around us, moving wrists and fingers, start to invite small movement to grow into larger movement. And then in your own perfect time, we're going to meet back seated. Again, taking your time. Coming back up to easy pose. For one minute of silent meditation. Again, the meditation can be longer. Meditation has been proven scientifically to help with chronic pain. There's so many benefits, again, to silent or guided meditation. So again, stay as long as you'd like, as long as you can. But for now, we're going to close the practice. So inviting hands home to heart, put one hand on top of the other. It's been my great, great pleasure to share yoga with you. 
please reach out. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any concerns. I hope you find this helpful. So nice again to connect with you, Tiff. Love you, girl. Have a great day. Bye-bye.